Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Brian. Uh, I'm the product manager for Kepler.gl. So uh, in the following session, by the end of the workshop, uh, you'll be able to compare the speeds uh, across t uh, two different time periods. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to pick two different time periods of the movement speeds data. We're going to compare that side by side on the screen so that we can extract some insights. On the second half of the tutorial, uh, we'll basically leverage uh, Kepler uh, leverage movement, movement data and then we'll overlay that with additional data set uh, with, uh, under the safety use cases just to, uh, to extract some of the complex insights as well. So for the first tutorial, so when I was thinking about what type of uh, data, uh, interesting time period uh, we should use when I, uh, to visualize the data for this workshop, um, I browsed the news and then I came across that uh, on 2018, November 15, I realized there's a huge snowstorm in New York City. So, and, I, and with that snowstorm, it's actually the first snowstorm in the New York City and then it was came un unexpected according to the news, and then there are, like brought in uh, several inches of snow and poses a huge problem to the uh, commuters. So with, with this, I was thinking, oh, well, th th that'd be really cool if we can visualize the speeds data on this day on, Kep uh, on Kepler and then to un un understand what's the impact uh, on the snowstorm on the public highway, uh, like the public road. And I'm thinking spe specifically around highway as well. So in the workshop, so basically, uh, this, this is the data set that we have downloaded, uh, which is the New York City speeds data set with uh, November 15th, and then which is the snowstorm day. In addition, we're going to, uh, I'm also going to use the week before, which is uh, the November 18th of 2018, as a proxy to the regular, uh, regular speeds that we're going to compare against the, uh, the speeds that happened in the snowstorm day against with. So with this, uh, all the data that uh, the following uh, workshop material will be uh, used over here. Uh, so it would be great if you guys can go to navigate to this link, t.uber.com slash MV movement MV, MVT Kepler workshop. Then you'll be able to uh, download and see the uh, data available uh, for the rest of the workshop. So first of all, we go to uh, Kepler.gl, uh, which is, uh, as Adam described, as an open uh, open source geospatial tool that we, uh, we're going to mainly need to use in today's section. So in the first part, I'll be curious to visualize uh, the, uh, the first thing we're going to add is the November 15 New York City speeds data set into the Kepler. So all we need to do is basically copy this URL, the, which the data is already preloaded on the storage. And then we go to uh, Kepler on this page and we can click add the data. And after that, we'll hit loading the map URL. We paste this data URL and then we hit fetch. Since the data set is kind of large, normally it may take around 30 seconds to up to a minute to load it. So as you can see, so as you can see, we have the uh, data set over here. And then here, I'm gonna first, I'm gonna first rename this data set to the date. And as I mentioned, um, I'll be very curious to look into uh, the highway uh, specifically of the spe speed data. So we can navigate to the filter a tab, and then when we can add a filter where um, under the OSM highway field, we can then filter specifically for motorway speeds data. So right now it's just um, filter out uh, only the uh, motorway data. So next step is about configuring the map data, uh, the map layer. Uh, I just want to add some colors to the map. So with this, um, I think one time maybe try is instead of copy the link, I think also try uh, right click the link and then copy, 
link address and paste it on the data. I think sometimes there will be the formatting issue as well. Yep. So because uh, each, uh, these segments contain a value uh, of, of motorway under this in, 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 in the data, that's why. Uh, like a tip, yeah. No, it's perhaps it's just like the, the boundary of uh, the data that we have, uh, of the speech data. So yeah, so we can, with this, uh, I want to uh, add a color coder based on the speed of the segments. So we can go to uh, expand the sections and then choose color based on the speed mean. So with this, we can see a range of different colors representing different speeds. But however, I would like to see that uh, the faster uh, speed segments to show as uh, like a lighter blue and then the slower show as red. So I'm just going to change another range. And in this case, I'm going to use uh, quantize as a color scale as it fits better to the distribution of the speed. So that's how we do, uh, that's how we configure the November 15th, the data set with the snowstorm. Oh, I'm gonna keep uh, uh, keep talking. Okay. So if we want to uh, compare it side by side, we also need to uh, add another data set, which is the regular one, which is November the eighth. So similarly, we, we can just click add the data, and then copy the link, and then we'll paste it over here. So it will. Yep. So with this uh, new uh, the data set that we have just added, we're just going to uh, do the same thing with the first data set. First, we're going to um, add a new data, uh, add a new filter, choose the new data set that we added. Choose the new data set that we've added here. And then we similarly we choose the motorway. And then in addition, we're gonna filter it just like the same way, but let me rename it first. And then we're just gonna choose the color based on the speed uh, mean. And we pick quantize. So after this, so after this, basically, um, we have after configuring two different data sets, we can then on the top right, we actually have a button called switch to dual map view. So on this, after hitting that, we'll then like a split screen uh, panel mode that will enable. Um, what we can do right now is then open the show layer panel and then we'll just configure to see one panel to include one data set and the other include the other. So on the left, I'm just going to include the 2018 November 15, which is the snowstorm one to compare. And on the right, we'll just include the November 18, uh, November 8 as a way to, to proxy as the regular one. So with this, we can then look into the data set to say, so with this, we can see that um, the one on the left it's actually uh, slightly more in the red color, and on, on the right, it's actually slightly in terms of blue. So that means 
as a, a way to show that um, even though it's a slight difference, but show that uh, it's got impacted uh, during the snowstorm in, in this particular highways. Sure. Uh, so, uh, so we, to repeat her question, her question is, uh, when we have two data layers in one map, how do we aggregate it? Uh, so currently we actually don't, we just actually treat that as two different data sets. So it will just become like a, a split screen of two data sets, but you can interact them all together when you move the map. Sure. Currently, it's actually uh, normalized within the own data set. Yeah. But with this, uh, we actually find uh, they have similar range. That's why we use it as, a, as an example. So I think it seems like this is the first one. And then one more thing, just want to highlight a special feature in Kepler is we can also easily visualize in a 3D map as well. So all we, can, we need to do is uh, on the right, there's a 3D map uh, button that we can click. And then we can control the view. And then on the base layer, we can also add a bunch of uh, like 3D, built in 3D uh, building data already. And when we zoom in, these 3D building uh, like layers will, will pop up, and then which can build some interesting uh, visualizations that we can have. Just, just like this. 